As to the horses, it was one day when I was out buying some cattle at uh, just the other side of Burford that um, I had my young daughter with me and we went to see these cattle and I'd bought the cattle and on the way out I noticed this foal in the field and jokingly I said to my daughter, would you like daddy to buy that foal for you? And she said, oh, yes, please, because she loved her horses. And that turned out to be a horse called Easter Eel, which finished up with the, the top man, Fred Winter, training it and Johnny Frankham riding it. And I think we won. If it wasn't, if it wasn't 10, it was 11 races out of 14 that he ever ran in. And uh, that was, well, something that will never be done again as far as I'm concerned. But it gives you a taste for the racehorses, but it's not a cheap holiday that you get from it. It's an expensive hobby. But if you get the right one, it can be a very, very nice hobby. Born in the granite city of Aberdeen, my grandfather, or Bampy as he's known within the family, is a businessman living in the Cotswolds. He has owned a variety of horses for 30 years. Today he owns just two, Rebecca's Choice, who is just one week away from what will be the last big race of his long racing life, and one for the boss. In the last few years, Bampy's horses have been stabled and trained at Di Birchall's yard in the valleys of Ebervale, South Wales, where the stable staff give them a unique working out. Di, who at 78 years of age is a veteran of the horse racing community and has been a trainer since leaving the steelworks in the valleys where he worked after leaving the armed forces in the 1960s, he is one of the most respected members of a close-knit community. We got a very good friend, Jason Tucker, and he recommended me to Andrew Much. And we had uh, we had a couple of horses from Andrew and his wife and a couple of others. And we had the good fortune to do well with them. And then uh, a year later, Andrew's father sent us Rebecca's Choice. Well, he is really good a really good horse that is <clears throat> but he's now 12 year old so he's coming to the end of his tether and we we're running him a week today in the midland grand national <clears throat> and we're hoping to be in the first six week could have farges behind those velatoris next carols district has been pulled up here's rebecca's choice joining him. rebecca's choice's last win came in december 2014 when he won the coral welsh grand national trial before finishing ninth in the welsh national itself this win was off the back of a seventh place finish at the scottish grand national and a win at cheltenham earlier in 2014. his jockey robert dunn has ridden him on several occasions and knows him very well after a session on the gallops, he was keen to tell me the potential for the race next week. It's still battling on, but it's Rebecca's choice who wins the Coral Welsh National Trial. So, the, the all felt well this morning. Yes, everything feels well, it's yeah. fresh and well. Mm. 
because I'm hoping that we can get him back to the way that he was when he won the, the national trial. Yeah, yeah, hopefully he will because the ground will be better at your tox Durham. There probably won't be as many runners as there was in the Welsh National, so hopefully right. he'll have a smoother run and things will go better. Because there is a doubt about us getting in, looking at because we want at least nine or ten yeah, to drop out. Yeah, should get in. There's plenty of the top trainers, have multiple entries, so yeah. hopefully we yeah. get in. So that could come my to our benefit. <coughs> yeah. What else do you write this morning? Any good? Nothing. <laughs> he he won the recently. He won the uh, the Welsh National first trial, which was very very good. Uh, but we we now go for the main race now and. Uh, We've just got to keep our fingers crossed that he uh, he's he's good enough to show his ability. Uh, if he shows his true ability, he should be there or thereabouts. But horse racing is a very very difficult game, and they all have the good days, they all have the bad days. But he has done his best, and he's he's a good rider. I mean, the jockey that rides him time and time again thinks he's a great jumper, thinks he's a, a good contender, uh, but you've got to have luck as well. That is, that's the one thing in national hunt racing you've got to have, is that wee bit of luck. Throughout the week leading up to the big race, Rebecca's choice is put through his paces on the gallops and confidence remains high within the yard that he can obtain a top six finish. However, with just two days to go, news emerges that Robert Dunn is unable to ride, leaving Di and Bampy the challenge of finding another jockey. Founded in 1907, Utoxeter Racecourse has had a challenging history over the years, nearly closing due to insufficient funding. Since 1969, it has been the home of the Midlands Grand National, the second longest steeplechase in the country at four miles and one and a half furlongs. It consists of 21 jumps. Brian Henderson, an independent bookmaker, analyses Rebecca's Choice's chances. I think it's got a slim each way chance. It might be in the frame, but Tony McCoy's on a very, very strong price favourite for John Jordan, and you know, it's his last season, so the favourite will take some beating been a lot of money for that. I think it's four to one and I think it's about eleven to four now, so uh, a small each way chance. If it wins it'll be a good result for me, I know that. Yeah. Small small each way chance I would say. But it's a very tough race. You know, it's a very it's fifty six thousand pounds to the winner, so it's a very hard race to win the Midland Grand National. But I wish you well anyway. Two days before the race, Andrew Tinkler was confirmed as the new jockey. Andrew is an excellent replacement, having ridden close to 400 winners, including a winner at the recent Cheltenham Festival. However, this will be the first time he has ridden Rebecca's Choice, and this could make all the difference. Just moments before the race and Rebecca's choice is led into the pre-parade area where he is saddled up and prepared for the big race. Once he is ready, Rebecca's choice is led into the parade ring for punters to have one final look before deciding to place a bet. I spoke to Di about his final thoughts before the race. You're talking about a good race. Sir. You, you can run well and finish ninth in this. And you can run a, under par and be placed. But we'll soon find out now. Dai gives Andrew his final instructions before he mounts the horse and rides Rebecca's choice past the crowds in the grandstand to take his place at the start line.
And they're off in the Betfred Midlands Grand National of 2015. Then Raz de Marais, Rebecca's Choice and Fox Bridges hanging right across the course. Gooniella, two from home, forging on in front, jumps it boldly. Woodford County almost down and out when disputing second with Hawks Point. Raz de Marais keeping on stoically. Gooniella then with one more left to jump in the Midlands National. Raz de Marais moving into second. Gooniella at the last and over it neatly and over it clear and leading home an Irish 1-2 because he's chased up the run in by Raz de Marais Gooniella for Jonathan Burke Jim Draper, Jim Draper Alan and Ann Potts and it's Gooniella who wins the Betfred Midlands National. Despite lining up against the very strong field, Rebecca's choice finished in 6th place, fulfilling both Di and Bampy's expectations It's an honourable result for the spirited horse in the twilight of his racing life very happy, he's 12 years old, it was a gruelling test um, and he's, he's picked up a thousand pounds prize money. Um, he ran a really good race for a 12 year old, mixing against them horses with younger legs and more energy. He's ran a really, really good race. Thank you. Bampy's other horse, one for the boss, showed much encouragement for the future by coming second in his race, also ridden by Andrew Tinkler. It was great having spent a few weeks with Di and Bampy. I've learned a lot about a business that I'd initially thought as being expensive. Despite what Bampy said about horse racing being an expensive hobby, Di has shown me that it's passion and spirit far more than finance that makes a winning racehorse. You ask me about Rebecca's. Um, she, he, sorry, we keep saying she because it's Rebecca. Uh, he has been a good servant, really. I mean, uh, we had him with one trainer who didn't appear to get the best out of him, but since he's been with Di Birchall, he's been a tiny little money spinner, and he's paid, he's paid his passage. 